Uhuru, <laughs> brothers and sisters and comrades, this is Omali Shetel. I'm chairman of the African People's Socialist Party. And I'm also the leader of the Uhuru movement and the international African revolution. I wanted to talk to you today about uh, this growing fascination and uh, with uh, the what is being characterized as the Green <coughs> New Deal. This Green New Deal is something that uh, inside the United States is being forwarded by what, uh, what is characterized as the progressives uh, within the Democratic Party. This was a part of the debate really that uh, that uh, was in, that uh, uh, happened in the presidential election, uh, the 2020 presidential election uh, that uh, where Joe Biden was accused of being a supporter of the Green Deal. And of course, uh, uh, Kamala Harris had uh, previously signed on to this uh, Green uh, New Deal, but Biden uh, disassociated himself with it. And then so did uh, Kamala Harris later on uh, in the process when she was put in the position of having uh, to, when she put in the position of becoming uh, Biden's uh, uh, vice presidential uh, partner in the campaign. And the Green Deal uh, is something that takes its, uh, its uh, title from uh, the New Deal. The Green uh, New Deal is something that takes itself from the title, uh, from the, uh, the original New Deal that was put forth by uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, uh, who was president of the United States during the time of what was characterized as the Great Depression uh, in, uh, in the 1930s. And this uh, New Deal was something that um, uh, had a tremendous amount of uh, US government intervention in the uh, economy uh, of the United States that created all kinds of different uh, programs that were designed to uh, uh, save uh, the, the, the country from the consequences of, of the depression and uh, politically uh, to save uh, the, the, this regime or the U.S. government from the, what they thought uh, was the likelihood of a possible even communist revolution by, uh, by buying off sectors of the workers, by uh, making uh, different uh, kinds of, uh, of agreements and putting uh, forward different kinds of programs that would uh, speak to the workers who were in, this, in the United States who were uh, experiencing the devastating impact of, uh, of uh, capitalist, uh, capitalism uh, going through uh, one of its uh, <coughs> uh, crises of, uh, and, and, and so uh, Roosevelt put forth this, this new deal. <coughs> and since that time, almost everything inside the United States when there's a need by, by liberals in particular uh, to uh, forward, to try to uh, push for an intervention by the United States government uh, into the economy here uh, that in a way that's supposed to benefit uh, uh, the poor, the workers and things like that. Uh, they always use the term New Deal. Uh, obviously, uh, they don't speak that much about workers nowadays because workers, uh, working class is not something that's uh, held in high esteem that much. So they, they talk about uh, the middle class, uh, that things have to be better for the middle class. And so they put forth programs. And the, the uh, Green New Deal is no different in that what it does is offers uh, uh, some uh, proposals. Uh, its sponsors, primary sponsor has been Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, uh, that uh, these proposals uh, include uh, things like uh, 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 um, a universal, like a Medicare for all, uh, it includes uh, eradicating uh, the uh, debt, uh, uh, various kinds of <laughs> environmental uh, improvements, because that's what was part of it too. Because the liberal, a liberal sector of uh, capitalists uh, in this country are, are really a concern about the consequence of of the uh, of the erosion of the environmental stability of, of the planet because of what it will mean to them. They are more or less far-seeing uh, sectors of the capitalist class, where most of the capitalists, as you know, 
uh, mobilized just in order to get profits. Right now, uh, there's a far seeing sector of the capitalist class that recognizes that in order to secure a, the, a capacity or for capitalism to grow and survive, uh, uh, in, they have to do things that attack uh, what they see uh, as, as uh, being an existential crisis for the social system, for the system itself. And this existential crisis for capitalism is being defined in, in, as an existential crisis uh, for the planet. And that's not a far-fetched uh, uh, statement. The planet is, uh, because of the climate change, uh, uh, in, in, uh, is uh, facing an existential crisis. Uh, and this crisis is so severe that uh, it has resulted in uh, the melting of the ice in the Antarctic uh, uh, and, and at a rapid pace. Uh, that threatens even the, uh, the destruction of, of, that, of the ice in the Antarctic. And, uh, and that means that if that happens, <clears throat> the, the role that the Antarctic has played, the ice caps in the Antarctic, has played to reflect the, uh, the, 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 the sun uh, 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 up into, away from the earth, <clears throat> is now being dissipated. And more of the heat from the sun <clears throat> is going uh, into, uh, into the ocean itself. <clears throat> and this is unleashing uh, uh, havoc through thousands of years of uh, decayed uh, mass matter uh, that's under the surface of the ocean and allowing for these bursts of, uh, of, of, uh, 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 of uh, carbon uh, e explosions, if you will. Uh, that that uh, is challenging even the uh, the uh, 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 capacity of 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 the earth to contain or to for the for the uh, heat to leave the atmosphere, and so there's this bubble uh, that uh, surrounds the earth coming from uh, from these gases, and and this is problematic. Uh, we've seen even. Uh, over the recent period, there has been the there has been uh, the Earth itself has been moved from its axis in part because of the melting ice. Uh, this is not absolutely unusual in terms of the Earth moving on its axis, but it's never happened before with in such a rapid pace. All of this is tied to the climate change, so it's a real critical question. It's not a small question; it's a real question, and all kinds of uh, species of of life. Uh, are dying out uh, because of this. It used to be referred simply uh, to as simple as global warming, but it's not just global warming. We see more uh, hurricanes and more intense hurricanes. We see uh, uh, cyclones and tornadoes and things like that happening everywhere. So it's an extraordinary, a uh, growing kind of contradiction that's requiring uh, some kind of intervention. And so we have uh, particularly like a lot of liberals who put forth this, uh, this concept of the of the of the new of the green new deal, and what we're saying is that uh, uh, the green new deal uh, seems to be the same old deal. Uh, the green new deal uh, is something uh, that we have to really uh, investigate in terms of its significance and its potential for solving the problems of the earth. And this is what we are looking at, the problems of the earth that's being destroyed uh, by, the, by capitalist uh, capitalism. And this, this impact on the climate by capitalism is something that even growing numbers of environmentalists and liberals are able to recognize to some extent. Uh, but even when they uh, recognize that, uh, in most instances, they assume that somehow uh, despite the fact that capitalism is there, they can come forward with some kind of new green deal. They can come up with alternative energy sources. Uh, they can come up uh, with something that's not uh, having the same impact in terms of carbon emissions uh, and, 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 and it can work. Uh, or or they, they make the assumption that uh, this changes despite the fact that some of them will recognize the existence of capitalist influence in this process they uh, find themselves not being able to put forth proposals that attack uh, capitalism itself. They assume that somehow 
uh, these, uh, these solutions that they put forward uh, can occur uh, within uh, a capitalist uh, uh, social system. And you know, they assume that because there's no discussion around uh, this, the, 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 the danger of climate change that uh, talks about eradicating capitalism. And this is really interesting and serious because it's a critical moment in history. It's something that many Africans have not paid that much attention to this whole, uh, or have not appeared to pay that much attention to uh, this issue, this question of, of climate change, uh, the uh, assault on the environment. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that we have, <laughs> and Africans have historically and traditionally fought around this question, except we didn't call it uh, environmentalism. Uh, we haven't called it uh, something uh, that deals with climate change. Our approach to this question as Africans has been extro is extremely different uh, from the approach that we see now uh, being taken around this question, particularly by Europeans, uh, whether in Europe or in North America or, or some of the other places where Europeans have, have gone. Some of the, we see a few people who are concerned about this issue with uh, the dramatic climate uh, change, crisis, climate crisis, who have even been able to say that colonialism that is a, is a factor here, that, we, that colonialism is a question and they speak of colonialism because of what, the, what Europe has done to extract uh, uh, all kinds of resources from Africa and other places around the world and what that has meant uh, for the planet uh, for, uh, 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 in fact, <coughs> Uh, uh, some of them uh, go so far as to say uh, that Europe and the United States need to be paying reparations to Africa and other places because it is Europe and the United States that created this crisis. In fact, in 2009, in Copenhagen, crisis, a, crisis, a, 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 a conference, an environmental conference occurred. And uh, some, especially some of the Africans who attended that conference, <laughs> were demanding that Europe and the United States uh, bear the burden economically of dealing with this, uh, this, this climate crisis because the, what was being proposed is that uh, all of the different countries uh, play more or less uh, the same, uh, do the same thing in terms of uh, eliminating uh, uh, emissions uh, 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 that uh, contribute to the, uh, to the economic crisis. And they were saying that Europe and the United States, you have uh, benefited uh, through the use of carbons, uh, through the the petrol, uh, uh, through use of of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of petroleum, uh, et cetera, and now uh, you are trying to deny uh, Africans and other people. Even at one point, China was making this argument against the United States and Europe that you are talking about putting a cap on the kind of uh, emissions that can occur uh, for production. And this is a way that Europe and America. Uh, uh, attempting to lock uh, uh, other so-called developing countries into this place of development uh, that uh, is subordinate to Europe and to America. So we've heard that argument. We've heard other arguments about how, uh, how uh, Europe should pay reparations. Uh, America should pay reparations in order to deal with the climate uh, challenges that, that's occurring uh, in Africa and some other places, but even that misses the point. Uh, the, 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 most of the environmentalists, most of the liberals who talk about this question, uh, they begin to uh, look at the issue of global warming uh, from 1750 and what they characterize as the industrial revolution uh, in Europe. And this is where uh, they, they see global warming uh, beginning to take off. And they have uh, come up with uh, what uh, they, they say is a scientific assessment uh, that really requires uh, <laughs> these, uh, these uh, 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 emissions uh, not to, uh, they, they, they really requires uh, limiting uh, the global warming uh, to less than two Celsius uh, uh, degrees for the globe. And, this, and some say it's about 1.5, in terms of the 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 heat, the growth uh, in the in the in the uh, in the heat, some say it's about 1.5 Celsius now. Some say it's already past that. Some are saying that if it goes beyond uh, two 
degrees uh, 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 in terms of the, the climate change, in terms of the, the heat, uh, the warmth, uh, then it's reached a tipping point uh, that could mean that uh, life on the planet uh, would not be uh, sustainable. And in fact, there are uh, daily uh, something like hundreds of species on the planet who are dying because of the consequences of this, uh, the, of this climate change that people are talking about. But the, the, the deal is that 1750 is when they start this countdown, is when they begin this measurement, when they claim uh, the global warming uh, took off. But by 1750, Africa uh, had been uh, uh, under assault by Europe uh, for 250 years. By 1750, Portugal uh, had been uh, kidnapping African people uh, for something like 200 years or more and dispersing us around the planet Earth uh, in this process uh, that destroyed much of the planet, destroyed much of Africa, uh, and, 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 and was devastating. <laughs> that was, and so obviously, you know, to start at 1750 uh, is something that is important particularly to Europe to explain uh, the development in Europe and of Europe. By 1750, by 1600, uh, we have read uh, that there was uh, uh, something like uh, perhaps 56 million uh, uh, indigenous peoples in the Americas that are called Indians had been killed as a part of the colonial project. And, and as a consequence of this, this murder of a, of, of a peoples throughout the Americas, it meant that the, the farmland uh, uh, left untended and various other areas of their cities, et cetera, were overgrown now with forests, uh, uh, releasing uh, uh, an, an extreme amount of carbon dioxide uh, uh, that resulted in uh, what they refer to as a, as a little ice age uh, around the globe. And, and this, this area of, uh, of territory in the Americas uh, was something they said about the size of France. And that had a um, powerful impact on the climate. So climate change had already begun. If you think about that, think about what happened uh, with Africa, uh, where uh, uh, it has been estimated by some up to 200 million African people were kidnapped and moved from Africa. And it, the, the whole ecosystem of the Atlantic Ocean uh, was changed by bringing Africans uh, from Africa on those ships uh, to the Americas and other places. And the sharks had actually learned to follow the ships where Africans were, were, were being brought from Africa as kidnapped the uh, uh, people. Uh, and many instances were being thrown overboard for economic reasons and jumping overboard because of refusal to leave Africa and what have you. So the sharks knew that they were going to eat well. They learned to follow the ships uh, from Africa all the way to the Americas. This was, this was changing uh, the ecosystem of the ocean. All of this had profound implications for what we are looking at now in terms of climate. Some people are able to recognize, again, the fact that colonialism played a role in the climate. Uh, and, and what uh, is uh, being recognized now as a climate emergency. But the problem is that they are only able to see uh, colonialism and those who can see capitalism as certain kinds of events. And they don't, are not able to recognize that colonialism was more than simply an event, that it is uh, the foundation of what they recognize as the capitalist system itself. In fact, they don't recognize that colonialism uh, uh, was a mode of production that solves the mystery, understanding this solves the mystery of how feudalism in Europe moved from what they characterize as feudalism to capitalism today. Uh, this is the mystery because uh, even as Karl Marx said that, uh, that, uh, that, that capitalism came about as a consequence of turning Africa into a warren for the commercial hunting of black skins. He talked about this being of the primitive accumulation of capital. The only way you can explain capitalism, he said, uh, existing at all was to support, presuppose that there was an, an accumulation of capital that presupposed capitalist production itself. And this 
capitalist accum this accumulation of capital came through slavery, uh, came through the attacking indigenous peoples in America, taking this land, this territory, these resources, and colonialism that spread throughout the world uh, by Europe and brought tremendous amount of capital into Europe uh, in particular, changed the world. And this was the part of the assault. This is the fundamental assault that was made on the climate because there is no way uh, that the climate uh, can be solved uh, uh, under colonial capitalism. And there is no way uh, for uh, uh, the, the earth uh, to, uh, to be rescued under colonial capitalism. Capitalism by its very nature uh, is, is aggressive. Uh, it is based on commodity production, commodity production, which means production for markets, production for sale. Nothing is produced because it is needed. It is a system that sucks resources, sucks resources in order to make more profit. So that's why you have capitalists who, as Lenin, D.I. Lenin once said, will sell you the rope to hang them with because profit is the only motive. That's the, that's the logic of the capitalist system. That's one of the laws of capitalist uh, development, uh, profit, uh, commodity production. You can't have capitalism without commodity production. And so uh, you have this commodity production, which is simply producing things, not because people need it, just because people need it, but because it's for sale, because profit can be generated as a consequence of producing it. So if it means destroying the earth, then they'll destroy the earth. And, and this is something that's important for us to understand because you hear these liberals and so-called leftists talking about uh, climate change and, and rescuing the planet. Uh, and they talk about the urgency of this question on the one hand, but they are unable to recognize that the only way the climate, the earth can be saved uh, is through assault on capitalism, the destruction of capitalism. And you can't destroy capitalism without getting to its foundation, which is colonialism, because this is what the whole process started from. It is from the theft of all the resources of, cap of, of colonized peoples around. This is what, what gave birth uh, to modern Europe. Uh, this is what uh, uh, is responsible for mine, an African uh, uh, who was born uh, in the United States, being born in the United States because of colonialism, the colonial attack on Africa that dispersed African people globally and then put up these artificial borders that contained and directed whatever kind of economic development that would happen, not for Africa, not for African people, but for Europe, which means extracting all the value, all the mineral resources and everything else from Africa, from what we now know as the Americas, et cetera. This is the climate crisis. This is what began. This is how the climate crisis originated. And therefore you cannot deal with the crisis the climate crisis without dealing with capitalism. You can't deal with capitalism without destroying the colonial pedestal upon which the whole capitalist system rests. That's the thing that they have not been able to deal with, to talk about, to address. Now, so they talk about clean energy and uh, uh, alternative energy. And this clean energy, they talk about especially Electri uh, uh, electrifying uh, the, the transportation, transportation system. And if they mean this mostly uh, uh, in Europe and America, and, and I imagine in parts of Asia and what have you, and, and much of that is already beginning. The electrification, you, you see that. Uh, one of the biggest uh, auto, most of the fastest, most significant uh, auto company in the United States is Tesla. And that's uh, an uh, electric vehicle. They're talking about electric buses. They have electric buses. They're talking about electric uh, 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 ships. And that, that is something that's already begun too. So the electrification, they say with electrification, then you, you eliminate the carbon emissions coming from uh, these, uh, these uh, combustible engines that that's most of the uh, uh, transportation system around the world uh, utilize today. But what they don't say is that uh, two things. One, what's going to happen uh, once they electrify, uh, or as they are electrifying Europe and North America, and major cor corporate corporations, uh, auto corporations right now, are involved in transforming uh, their, their operations so that they will be producing uh, electric automobiles and electric uh, 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 transportation uh, entities. 
uh, I, you should expect to see in the next several years, you will see a majority of, uh, of these companies having transformed, transitioned from, uh, from combustible engines uh, uh, that uh, emit all kinds of uh, uh, carbon dioxide and what have you uh, into, the, uh, into the atmosphere uh, with uh, 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 these uh, electric uh, 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 vehicles. Now, the problem is that uh, to have a successful uh, 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 so-called clean energy uh, for Europe, but let me just tell you about the other thing about that. What happens to those combustible vehicles? Africa is the largest market in the world for used cars which means that Europe and North America will be pushing, and perhaps China, perhaps China, will be pushing those used uh, 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 combustible-based uh, uh, vehicles into Africa, which means it will enhance even more the assault on the environment in Africa, right there in Africa, where we are already catching hell. And I think it's really important to say that. But in addition to that, what's going to happen is that you see that these uh, electric uh, uh, vehicles, these, uh, this, these electric transportation systems uh, require minerals and metals uh, that uh, come from Africa, uh, that come uh, from South America. Uh, you're talking about things uh, uh, like cobalt, uh, uh, things like chromium, uh, things like lithium, uh, uh, copper, and what have you, uh, that's necessary for the batteries, that's necessary for things even like for uh, building the, 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 the solar panels, uh, building the, uh, the, the, uh, the blades for the uh, wind uh, 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 generated, uh, wind uh, powered electrical generation. All of that, they're gonna be getting those resources from Africa. They're gonna be getting those resources from South America. They're gonna be getting those resources from other colonized places. So you're gonna still see uh, an assault being made uh, on uh, the environment where colonized and African people are living in a growing emisceration of our people because capitalism is vicious. And so there's, you talk about a clean energy resting on a dirty capitalist foundation, it won't work. And you have, you're gonna have a dirty capitalist foundation because it's based on extraction from colonial peoples and territories around the world, it won't work. And we agree with those uh, militant uh, environmentalists who say that it's an urgent matter and there is no time for to be dilly-dallying because the actual planet itself is being threatened. But what we say that in addition to that is that the urgency requires us to make revolution, to overturn colonialism. Uh, well, you find the original environmentalists, the indigenous people fighting in the Americas to hold on to our own resources. Where do you find this extraction of the various kinds of resources that's uh, sullying, if you will, the environment? Uh, the African people, our people who fought in Africa had to deal with the carving up Africa into this untenable situation. So there's not even a viable economy in Africa that the whole economic activity in Africa is designed uh, to produce value and wealth uh, for Europe and for North America at the expense of Africa so that our rivers are polluted, so that uh, the resources coming uh, uh, to create uh, coltan and, and cobalt and things like that uh, uh, contaminating our communities, uh, our health and things like that uh, all over the continent of Africa and other places around the world. So what's being fought for uh, that they call the, the Green New Deal is the same old dirty deal uh, at the expense of uh, the rest of the peoples around the world who are, who are dominated by colonial, colonialism. So to become a real environmentalist is to unite with the struggle by Africans and other colonized people to destroy colonialism. It is colonialism that made this whole system come into existence and the foundation of the system continues to be colonialism, even if they call it a clean colonialism or a green colonialism or an alternative colonialism is still colonialism. And that's the fight that we have to make. Every question, and there's no way you can get around this and there's no shortcut 
around this. And just as there's no shortcut to deal with the fact, they say that the earth will not be able to tolerate uh, 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 heat warmth uh, for, uh, for more than two Celsius. And they're saying that that's right around the corner, maybe, maybe by, by 2030. They're talking about that being the tipping point uh, for life on the planet Earth. And so uh, we're saying we don't want to die, but we've never wanted to die. And we've always wanted white people and colonizers to join us in this fight for the planet. There's no way you can talk about suddenly discovering an existential crisis for the planet when 56 million uh, so-called Indians, indigenous peoples in America already dead, that was an existential crisis, when maybe more than 100 million or more Africans in the whole process of bringing Africans from Africa to the Americas, that, that was an ex existential crisis. What's happening in Congo to us today, the numbers of people who have died bringing up coal tan, uh, getting uh, things like chromium, that's an existential crisis. Our children are in the mines and stuff, and we are dying like flies there and all around the world. That's existential crisis. That's existential crisis for most of us. So we are calling now, demanding now, requiring now uh, that these liberals and so-called leftists, these environmentalists, join in with the with the with the with the foundational environmentalists, those of us who've been fighting against colonialism from the very beginning, those of us who tried to save ourselves and save ourselves uh, in the process of doing that, save the planet Earth. That's where you will find uh, the real original uh, forces who are fighting to, to save the planet. Uh, this, 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 these environmentalists, if you will. Uh, I, I said earlier that many Africans uh, have not been able uh, to deal with what the environmentalists talk about because we are not environmentalists. We are African people who are suffering the consequence of colonial capitalism. And we fought against the whole damn thing because the environmental crisis stems from the assault that was made on Africa, that was made on the Americas and oppressed peoples around the world. And so these, these, these newly uh, evolved, newly created, these newly uh, uh, far seeing uh, colonizers need to join with the rest of us who've been fighting uh, uh, against this system uh, since its inception, since they first began to attack Africa, attack the Americas and things like this since the beginning of what Karl Marx referred to as the primitive accumulation of capital, which is another way of saying colonialism, the turning of Africa into a war for the commercial hunting of black skins. What, did, what England did to, to China in terms of the opium war, what, what France did to Vietnam, uh, what all of, these, for all of these countries in Europe did to build their own them, themselves, <laughs> <laughs> their economies and their civilization at the expense of the colonized peoples around the world. That's where capitalism comes from. That's where the crisis revolving around the climate comes from. You are crazy if you think it's possible to kill 56 million people, uh, to kill millions of African people. Leopold in Congo alone killed up to 12 million African people. How in the hell was that not an assault on the, on the, on the, on the environment? And guess why he was killing them? because they were not doing things that he needed them to do on plantations that would bring value and wealth to Europe at the expense of what was happening to the environment there in Africa and elsewhere. This is what we are dealing with. So the original environmentalists were the anti-colonial revolutionaries uh, stretching back forever. Whether it was in Kenya, uh, right now we're looking at situations where, where the indigenous people in the Americas talking about the ex existential crisis with an average lifespan in the 40s, where uh, uh, in Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone, you've heard me say it before, uh, the average the average lifespan or the medium age, uh, the, the average age uh, 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 is something like uh, uh, 37. That's the that's the lifespan, uh, and you find this kind of reality all over the world. They captured African people, and then they would work us to death in seven years in Barbados and certain other places where we were. We were taken captive and whatever. Look at what shell oil has done and continues to do uh, in Nigeria and other places. There, I don't hear environmentalists talking about that except the shell is naughty. I don't hear them being able to recognize that their lives, even the environmentalists, even the nice white people, that their existence as it is now uh, cannot tolerate uh, a real assault uh, on, 
on the system that, that creates the, uh, this environmental disaster, that what has to happen is that they have to abandon uh, their connection, their solidarity uh, with uh, this social system and unite under the leadership of the colonized people who've been waiting for them all this time. And hopefully what it means that now that uh, the, the Europeans have discovered an envir environmental crisis, uh, that they will also be able to hear that this environmental crisis, this existential crisis uh, for the planet uh, is founded, is based on colonialism and our responsibility is to give, to create an existential crisis for colonialism itself. That's what we have to do. So I just wanted to talk about that. We can be talking about this for more and more and we have to, we have to take control of this discussion. Otherwise we, we will have the, the Green New Deal people uh, trying to promote solutions uh, that don't help the vast majority of the people, even if they promise jobs, even if they prompt, and that's what they're promising, uh, full employment, they, even if they promise $15 an hour, what the hell does that mean uh, if we are living in a world that maintains the colonial domination of African people? Plus, their promises don't mean anything if you're colonized. And then in order for it to mean something, you have to have the power. And colonialism is something that has expropriated the power and the resources of the colonized peoples of the world, and it's our responsibility to take it back. So we will be talking about this more and more because it's absolutely necessary uh, for us to understand this question and be able to grapple with this question because as it is, there is an existential crisis here surrounding the assault on the environment. And there's gonna be more and more movement uh, talking about how to deal with that. And much of the political discussion in the coming weeks, months and years will revolve around the, the, the meaning of this, of this environmental crisis that, that's being talked about. But unless Africans who are colonized, unless we uh, 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 take uh, uh, control of this discussion, uh, then we will find that again, uh, as has always occurred, uh, they will be putting forth solutions uh, for the colonizers uh, that maintains the existence of capitalism, colonial capitalism at the expense of the colonized and at the expense of our existence. So we uh, want to see that the, the earth survives, uh, but the earth survives uh, for all of us, that we want to make sure uh, that we end all of the droughts that's now as a consequence of this climate thing uh, affecting us in Africa, the lack of water, even potential water wars that we hear talking about happening in Africa. Uh, uh, all of these things are a consequence of colonial domination in order to resolve them that African people have to be in charge of our own affairs, our own lives, have to have political power, have to have the power to govern. African people have to do this, colonized people globally have to do this, and those are the colonizers who've lived off of our blood and resources now uh, for so long and, and who see the wealth and resources that they've stolen from us and become problematic for their own existence. And I'm now talking about, let's not use as much of the stolen wealth as we've used uh, in the past. or so let's, let's try to harness the stolen wealth in a particular way so it's not disastrous for, uh, for uh, the planet as they see it, which means their planet, uh, they are going to have to join with the colonized people, Africans and the rest of us and overturn this whole social system so that the planet has an, a chance. And the thing that's gonna give the planet a chance is the working peoples of the world uh, will take control of, of this world through revolution. And that's the responsibility of African, the African revolution uh, uh, is an initiator of this process and central to the whole question of the liberation of all the working and toiling masses of the world and the liberation of all the colonized peoples on the world. That struggle is centered in the struggle for free Africa, for liberated Africa, for a united and, and liberated Africa and African people around the world. And the leading force building for that is the African People's Socialist Party, often recognized as the African Socialist International. This is your call to come and fight against this degradation of the violence of the, of, the, of the environment and the planet Earth by joining the original initial uh, uh, environmentalists that, who are the revolutionaries fighting against colonial domination by Europe, the capitalist colonial system. Uh, join the African People's Socialist Party, APSPUhuru.org, APSPUhuru.org. Thank you.